Welcome to the home of 100 to 1 Faith TV, the place for stories of amazing faith overcoming impossible odds. I'm Larry Gent, and this is the message for Grace Hartwood United Methodist Church on July 3rd, 2022. It's Communion Sunday, and it's also Independence Day weekend here at Grace Hartwood. Our sermon title is, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of mercy and grace, we come before you today in this land of freedom and peace. We pray that your true peace and freedom might come upon us and upon all of your children in every land. By the power of your spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, who sets freedom within every beating heart. Amen. Our reading today is from Psalm 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil. Be not envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. God will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in God and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your redemption like the noonday sun. The gospel reading is from Mark chapter 10. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do? do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The sermon text is from Acts chapter 3. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong, he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. We've been following the work of the Holy Spirit through the book of Acts. And here we see 
a miracle occurring. This miracle is dramatic, but not swift or sudden. Sudden, It's a miracle of power, but it takes place through a process. It is the miracle of the way that these friends of Jesus slowly, ever so slowly, through fits and starts and accidents along the way, came to resemble Jesus more in thought and word day by day. The amazing thing is that they began to reveal Jesus to the word, to the world, in all that they did and said. We saw how Jesus left the Holy Spirit in charge after he ascended to heaven. As we watch this story unfold, we see how Christ descends by that spirit over and over again to bring God's power down to people like us, and how Christ ascends again and again by that same power to bring our prayers to heaven. As the water cycle brings rains down to earth and purifies that invisible vapor to rise up only to bring refreshing rains once more. So the Spirit rains down upon us to purify us and then rises back up again. That process was at work in those early believers and so we know it is at work in our midst today. As the story unfolds today, this was just like any other day. People were going up to the temple to pray. Lots of people did that every single day. But no one expected that to accomplish much. Meanwhile, we see some folks in action. We don't know their names. We don't ever see their faces. But somebody carried this man to the same place day after day, fair weather or foul, come rain or come shine. That was his spot. We don't know why they were so faithful in that chore. Maybe they were his friends or loved ones. Maybe they were business partners and they took a cut of his daily earnings. After all, he couldn't go anywhere to spend his silver or gold without them. So they took him to a good spot. People on their way to pray might be more generous than those in the market. So they took him right up to the gate of the temple, and there they stopped. By law, they could go no further. He was prohibited from entering the sacred grounds. He was not whole, not fit, not able to go and enter and pray himself. So he had to watch from the gate while others went to pray. Peter and John had gone up to the temple to pray before. They had walked by this nameless, faceless man known only to us as the beggar. They knew the sound of his voice, and they knew what he wanted. Maybe it started hurting them that they had nothing to give, or maybe the Holy Spirit nudged them to see a real person sitting there as they walked past to pray. We don't know what made that day different. All we know is that it was no longer enough for them to go pray without expecting action. Their first action was to engage the man, to speak to him. You can imagine that didn't happen very often. Some might turn their heads. Some might even make sport of the old man in the shadows there. Not many would speak to him as if he mattered. But he was used to it. He didn't even try to make eye contact with anyone. 
It must have startled them when he said, when they said, look at us, look us in the eye, look at us as equals, for we are messengers of the gospel and that message is nothing more than one beggar telling another where to find bread. So look at us, man to man, person to person, beggar to beggar. Peter said, I know what you want, and I don't have it. We don't have what you want, but we do have what you need. As we celebrate the birthday of America today, I fear we have become a people with a long list of wants. Some want racial reconciliation, some want supremacy, some want more government intervention, some less. Some want power at any cost, some want to take the power away. So clearly, we can't all have what we want. Sadly, there are many who don't even know what they really need. Like our friend in this story, they sit just outside our reach. They think the church is closed to people like themselves. And so they continue to beg for what they think they want. Well, we don't have what they want, but thank God we do have what they need. We have the grace of God the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ. Peter and John had those things too. They had them every day when they went up to pray. But one day, God opened their eyes to see someone, someone who needed more than their prayers, someone who needed the love of God in action. Maybe the greatest miracle that day wasn't the healing, but the seeing. Maybe the miracle began when they looked that man in the eyes and said, I know we don't have what you want, but I know we've got what you need. I think that miracle started when they filled up on the Holy Spirit, and I suspect it continued when they prayed, Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes to see the needs around us. So now you are invited to this table of Jesus Christ. You're invited to come and fill up on the grace of God the Father, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ. But watch out. If you follow that up with a prayer for God to show you how to put that love into action, God just might show you the needs of all those people around you. And God just might show you that you already have what they really need.